On today's episode of Let's Talk Drones, we're comparing the camera quality between the DJI Mini 4 Pro and the original Mavic 3. Now, when the Mini 4 Pro hit shelves, there was a lot of speculation as to whether or not it was going to make some of DJI's current offerings obsolete, including the Mavic 3. So we're going to take a look at the photo and video quality of both of these drones side by side to see who reigns supreme. Without further ado, Let's Talk Drones. What's up? It's Chris the Drone Geek and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Drones. Let's Talk Drones is brought to you by The Droning Company, the number one online resource for commercial remote pilots based in the United States. Make sure you check them out online at thedroningcompany.com and across all major social media platforms. I am here in beautiful Nashville, Tennessee. It is fall, so it's not quite as green as it was the last time we were here, but I'm excited to make today's video because we've got the beautiful Nashville cityscape. We've got Nissan Stadium, home of the Tennessee Titans behind us, and these are the subjects we're going to use to compare the camera quality between the Mini 4 Pro and the Mavic 3. As I said in the intro, when the Mini 4 Pro hit shelves, there was a lot of speculation as to how good this drone was going to be. Can you use it professionally? Is the camera quality there? And does it knock some of the current offerings or then current offerings of DJI off of their proverbial throne, including the original Mavic 3? Now you're gonna have to forgive me. I do have a little bit, you'll see me fidgeting with the camera on the Mavic 3. I've got the wide angle lens on it. There's no reason for this other than I can't find my lens case. I think I left it back in my hotel room. So we're just gonna have to deal with the wide angle lens on the Mavic 3. It should not affect the image quality in any discernible way when we're comparing the two drones. So let's go ahead and put these up in the air. Let's take a look at some of the beautiful views that Nashville has to offer through the lens of both the Mini 4 Pro and the Mavic 3. We'll come back and talk about what we find. Okay, so now that we've had a chance to look at the photos and videos I captured around Nashville with both of these very capable drones, let's talk about what we found. We'll start with the drone that I've been talking about for the past few weeks now, the Mini 4 Pro. That's really what this video is about. We're just bringing the Mavic 3 in as a guest star. First of all, I wanna start by saying that I continue to be impressed by the quality of the Mini 4 Pro all the way around. If you've been watching my review video series here on YouTube, you'd know that I continue to find just these absolutely fantastic stretches that they made with the Mini 4 Pro, and the camera quality is definitely no exception. If you'd like to take a look at the camera quality video that I did recently on the Mini 4 Pro, go ahead and click the link up in the corner. It's in one of these two corners, so you can click that now if you'd like, or you can stay and talk about the difference between the Mini 4 Pro and the Mavic 3. 
This drone continues to impress me with that one over 1.3 inch sensor. It's about as close as you can get to one inch without actually getting there. It has stellar image quality. When you're shooting for social media or even web-based clients, the Mini 4 Pro is going to get the job done. You can be sure of that. The only thing that I will say about the Mini 4 Pro, and we talked about this in that previous camera quality video on this drone, is that you will need ND filters to capture versatile, flexible, cinematic video. If you're not shooting with ND filters, as I'm not yet because I don't have my ND filters yet, they're trapped in the mail, you're gonna have some issues with being able to set your shutter speed and your ISO appropriately, especially on really bright sunny days. Now the ISO doesn't really become too much of an issue because of course we're gonna set it to 100 when we're in a bright and sunny day like this, but our shutter speed is where the problem comes in because that's the only other exposure value that we can actually adjust. And when you increase that shutter speed, yes, it does bring back the exposure on it, makes it a little bit darker and prevents the image from being blown out, but what you also get is a lack of motion blur. So if you get that shutter speed too high, you're going to end up having an issue when it comes to the footage looking too surreal. There's not gonna be any motion blur. Everything's gonna be super freakishly smooth. And that's not always the look that you want, especially in cinematic pieces. Now, if you're shooting sports, something that's fast moving, you wanna be able to catch all of the detail without all of the blur and have it be just completely ruined because of that motion blur, obviously that's okay. But if you're shooting cityscapes like this, it's gonna look a little odd and a little bit too surreal for most people's liking, unless you have an ND filter that allows you to darken up the image without jacking up the shutter speed. Again, the Mini 4 Pro does not have an adjustable aperture. I don't see them ever implementing that on this drone unless something huge happens with DJI. I think they're gonna to continue to keep this as a fixed aperture as well as the air. Maybe some pro offerings of the air will see an adjustable aperture, a small range of adjustability, but I really don't think we'll ever see that on the Mini. So when you do plan on buying a Mini, if you wanna use it for cinematic purposes, you're gonna to wanna to buy ND filters with it. Now, even though this video is about the Mini 4 Pro primarily and how it stacks up against a different drone from DJI, we do have to acknowledge that the Mavic 3 won this comparison. When you're looking at whether or not to purchase a Mavic 3 or a Mini 4 Pro for professional work, I would have to say the nod goes to the Mavic 3. It, the deck was stacked against the Mini 4 Pro. The Mavic 3 has that four-thirds sensor and it is fantastic. You can crop in so tight on your images with the Mavic 3 and you can still have a crystal clear, crisp, clean image and you don't have to worry about noise. You don't have to worry about distortion. This is just a fantastic drone all the way around for professional work. And that's why I've said, even in my original video talking about the Mini 4 Pro's camera, that that will be my social media drone. The Mini 4 Pro is great for smaller format screens, but when it comes to professional work, stuff that needs to be as high quality as possible, the Mavic 3 is going to continue to be my drone workhorse. So as we wrap this review video up, I wanna bring both drones back into focus. Just because the Mavic 3 won this comparison in my mind, doesn't mean that the Mini 4 Pro is a bad drone. In fact, if you've been watching my review series on the Mini 4 Pro, you know that I believe quite the contrary. This is the most capable Mini drone that DJI has put out to date. You can definitely use this for professional projects. You just need to make sure that you set expectations accordingly. First of all, you do definitely want to get ND filters because that gives you maximum flexibility when it comes to exposing especially video files. Now, when you're shooting photo, not so big of a deal unless you're trying to intentionally capture motion in the photo. That's going to be a problem when it comes to exposing without an ND filter. So that's the first thing. But the second thing is, is you want to make sure that you remember what the Mini 4 Pro is good at. It is good at putting out really high quality imagery for smaller platforms. I'm talking social media, I'm talking web base, anything that you would view on a tablet, a phone, or a smaller screen. The Mavic 3 can reach up into the larger formats. I'm talking cinematic projects. I'm talking projects that require a really, really high level of detail. With that four-thirds sensor, you just can't beat it in this category of drone, which I would consider consumer slash prosumer. So yes, even though today the winner was the Mavic 3, the Mini 4 Pro came as close as any mini drone has ever come to toppling the king of the castle, the Mavic series of drones. What did you think though? Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of each drone and which drone you would prefer for your setup and which drone you were most impressed by. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up icon. It helps me out a lot. It helps get this video out into the algorithm to more folks like yourself. If you love drone content made by drones, about drones, and for drone pilots, well, this is the channel for you, my friend. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And while you're at it, hit the bell icon. It'll give you a notification every time I post a new video. Until next time, I'm Chris. This is the Mavic 3 and the Mini 4 Pro, and we're out of here. See ya. Howdy, partner. Yo, yo, what you say? Steady screaming, yo, no rocket polo.